Hey what's up everybody, welcome to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about the SYRC lighting system installed on an RC four wheel drive D90 Jolande 2. This one here is installed on my autobiography edition and I'm super excited to show you guys because I'm really really liking the features at the moment. And first I'm going to show you all the lights coming on and which buttons correspond to what. Then I'm going to talk a bit about the functions and installation and some of the issues I ran into as I was installing it. So let's turn this on straight away. The kit comes in a two channel version which is basically controlled by the steering and this one is the free channel version since I have a third channel on my remote. Now as soon as you turn it on the brake lights come on obviously because it's stopped and not moving so if I just start moving forward or ask it to move forward without actually moving forward the brake light will turn off. Now I'll show you what the headlight looks like. So if I push the button once the headlights come on. If I push this button twice the fog lights should come on. If I push it three times the hazard warning lights come on. I don't have to go in that sequence. I can turn any light on or off at any which point. So I can have just the fog lights on, in which case I'll turn off the headlights. Or I can just have the hazard lights on, in which case I'll turn off the fog lights. And I'll turn off the hazard lights now. It also has turn signals. Now as I showed you before, if I start moving, the brake lights will turn off and once they turn off, no lights are showing as you can see. If I turn on the driving lights, which is by pushing this just once, the headlight comes on and the rear driving light comes on. But right now you can't see them because the brake light's on. Once I move, you can see the driving light on the rear. This is what the reverse light looks like and the hazard lights from the rear. There are also fog lights which come on by turning left and pushing the function button. And as you can see the fog light there, there and there has come on. Just do the process again to turn it off. Left and function. And a number plate light as well which wasn't included in the kit but I bought an LED and soldered it to the system which now gives me a number plate light and that comes on by turning right and pushing the button. Repeat the process to turn off. And this is what the turn signal looks like from the left. If you're interested in buying this lighting system from SYRC, that's the brand name there. I don't know if they pronounce that SYRC or whatever, but if you go to their website, you'll be able to buy this online. Now they are a China based company and they ship uh, from China, but I got mine in roughly about two weeks during the Christmas season, so it wasn't too bad and it comes well packaged. This is it, all of it installed and I'm going to talk about now. Now the kit consists, oh before I talk about that, when you buy a kit for your RC car, make sure you buy the correct kit for the correct car. And that's because every kit is made perfectly for the vehicle, as in you won't have any leftover wires, there's nothing really to trim, everything is included and installation is non-destructive, meaning after you've installed anything, if you don't like it, you can uninstall it and you, the car will be exactly the same as before. It comes with all of the mounting points for all the wires. They give you ample ones of those and all the wires are the correct length to the corresponding areas they need to go. When I was installing this, I didn't have any stress or any doubts or any problems whatsoever. The wires are the correct length not too long and definitely not too short, as in you will never be fighting for room, tugging up wires or anything. It's made, I would say, very close to perfect. Now the latest D90 kits, I can't really say from experience, I can only tell you this from what I know about this kit and what I've seen online. The latest kit from RC4 wheel drive with the D90s come with LED ready brackets in the areas that should take lights. All I had to do was unscrew one and two screws for the headlight bracket for the front, these LEDs slot in the side and it goes back in screwing in perfectly with no issues there. Once I've had all the wires tidied up like this, you bunch them up roughly to the correct area and then you install these slide in wire tidies. They come with double sided tape on the back and all you do is stick them in the areas you feel you need them and slide the wires in from the side. They're acting like a clamping system like this and they're held together quite tightly and all you do is slide the wire in like this and it holds it in. They're very easy to pop back out if you need. Each LED is binned correctly, meaning the tint is very close to each other. 
I did not get any LEDs that were, say, when you're talking about the headlights, a cool white of a certain bin and a cool white of a separate bin. They were both rated and bin correctly. Brightness is very close to the same, and the tint is very close to the same. Now the kit consists of two main parts, an upper section, which is installed in the hard body only, and a lower section that is installed into the chassis. Both parts are separate, and all you have to do to connect them is use one wire, this one to the chassis, and that's it. So they've made it very, very simple. Now the hardest point I had, or the, the biggest issue I had when installing this kit, was nothing actually to do with the kit, it was to do with the hard body. The brake and driving light is in there. And unfortunately, I couldn't get any tool in there to undo the screw. If you look at this section, that is the false oil cap. And that was completely in the way. Luckily for me, the people that built this kit only used a minimal amount of glue to glue that in. So when I was trying to get to the screw in there, this just popped off, opening all this area here. I then used a very thin screwdriver to undo the screws. I was able to, by going in this angle, holding it like that, get right into that screw and undo it. After installation, this false filler cap could be glued back in the way it was. And that was absolutely fine. I didn't break any parts. Now the two parts that you see on my kit that you will not see on yours if you decide to buy this system is this hard glue here, hard glue here, and this wire here. Because that's my number plate light and those don't come with these kits. I simply installed one because I had the ability to use an LED in the number plate light housing and there was a free port here called H9 which I used. Now you won't have to use any of your unsightly hard glue like I have, I'm just doing this because I wanted this semi-potted or held in place like a solid anchor, but I'll tell you why that's there. This kit actually comes with a 3M double-sided tape that goes underneath this box here. Now I, being the curious type, wanted to see how well that double-sided tape would hold up. I was thinking this is going to get freezing temperatures, water and a lot of debris in there. Let's see if it holds up. So I decided to pry it off slowly and I was, as I was prying it off it started to stretch and I thought yes this is definitely not going to stand up to time. So I pulled on it and as I pulled it was harder to pull off as I pulled more until it was at the point where I could not get it off at all. It was very very tough and completely stuck to there. But by that point I had already stretched it out and it was completely worthless so I had to remove it using a lot of brute strength and then I had a look at the double sided tape and it turns out it was fiber reinforced crisscrossed all over. It was absolutely solid so through destruction of my double sided tape I can tell you guys that it was absolutely perfect for the job and it is very well rated for what it needs to do. In the end I decided to use this green colored hard glue to anchor the points that I thought might come off or might come loose and also to hold this box to the actual hard body. So mine is not going anywhere ever. And you can ignore these two wires here because these are just two extra ones which I'm running from the system which I'm saving for later. I'm actually going to use this for an interior light in the top of the hard body so I can control that too which will be quite fun. Now let's have a look at the chassis portion of this unit. And this is the chassis portion of the unit. So whenever I put on the hard body all I have to do is plug this in to the top part put the hard body on and we're ready to roll. Let's see what's inside the receiver box. And this is the only part that really needs to be installed in the bottom, this little unit here. So you get a line coming from your motor that plugs into one part and the other cable that comes off that goes into the corresponding channel of your receiver and the same with the servo wire as well that comes along here, goes into where it gets the signal for servo and the line coming off that goes into the servo channel of your receiver. And the only line coming back out would be this plug here. When you install everything in here, make sure nothing is crimped or bent or has a lot of excess pressure put on it. The original receiver that came with my autobiography Jolande kit actually had all the wires up here poking up and being completely stressed by the lid. That's why it's always a good idea to tidy up your wires. A good way to see if any excess pressure is being put on the wires is to just gently put the lid on top and if it closes without too much trouble then you're absolutely fine. If you have to really sandwich it down it's probably because there's something that's sticking up too much and you don't want to put too much pressure on that. So I'm about to do a running video for you guys to have a look just on a carpeted area but I thought I'd talk about some of the functions before I 
do that. If you don't want to hear about the functions or some issues which you may have to know about, then just skip forward. Uh, so it'll be near the end or the running videos and stuff. It'll probably just be like a short clip. But anyway, talking about the function of this, if you guys are using an aftermarket remote or you've bought um, or you're using one of your own remotes, which has programmability and things like that, one of the things you have to understand is you have to set it up correctly especially the button you're using as the function or on button or do button uh, for the unit in order for it to function correctly as in it may come reversed it may come with an alternate setup it the, each button may be configurable so that once you push them they are constant on or constant pushed and once you push them again they're constant off or they're just tap buttons only if that's the case make sure you program it correctly on a tabletop with the wheels above ground or disengaged and that way you'll have time and be able to set it up correctly uh, mine did come with issues because I didn't set up the functions and I didn't program it correctly. Everything was reversed for some reason, as in when I pushed the button once, the headlights were supposed to come on, but the fog lights would come on and they wouldn't come on by instant push either. They wouldn't come on at all. I had had to hold the button and then they would come on and now I would hold the button again and they would turn off. And I was thinking, oh, that's weird. You know, and then, um, but it's simply because you've got to go through the programming and make sure everything is correctly dialed in. Secondly, for functions on this, such as H9 or the other function, like, uh, let me just show you, if I push left and push the button, the fog lights come on. Now, left has to be engaged and you push the button for fog lights to come on. One very nitpicky thing is that the endpoints you set, if they're too aggressive, as in the endpoint is cut short by a lot, so let's say we do left and you dial the endpoint so it goes click, 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 and the endpoint is really close or a lot further in to neutral point, that won't register as a left when you push the button so your fog lights won't come on. You gotta make sure your endpoints are actually engaging to a point where they can register to come on. Uh, I did that because I was I had a really, really safe endpoint on mine and they wouldn't engage, but now they will. And same for the other side, because the other side, obviously, I've got my number plate light for that. So if I just push right and click the button, the number plate light will come on and same point for that if the end point is set too aggressively to come in back to neutral if the end point is set to engage too early just because of the setup you have for whatever reason like i did then that won't engage as a right and that won't come on either surprisingly the turning light will come on or the indicator but it will not engage the button register for some reason but I don't really care because um, I just set those back up and we're absolutely fine now. So here we go with the running video.